Hey, Composer Gloves here, and I'm going to show you in Citrus today, this is probably the last video, from the ground up at least, that what I can only call the global master settings, some sort of, it's the folders that drop down. So let's really quick look at these. So right off the bat, we can show and hide the keyboard. We can look at the block diagram, and we can see exactly the path that our stuff goes through. Well, not exactly, but we get a pretty good idea of, of where things are going. And we can see that once we hit D click, it'll go through filters. But if we pan it and stuff, it'll go another way. So it's it's a it's a pretty useful chart for the specific way things flow in FL. You can see the aux send down here. And this should actually it's got an out thing right here, but aux send should just send straight out. So it gives you a block diagram and you can you can look at this and study it. it most of the time, it's pretty intuitive, and I've shown you and pretty much implied the whole signal chain as we go, and I've given demonstrations as we're doing it. So it pretty much sums it up pretty good. Now, if we come over to the question mark, this is a, just their little, you know, like, hey, this Ultrafunk guy is everywhere in their plugins, man. So is this goal, reflex. I see these. There's a lot of things. Now, this uh, Brom... I'm probably saying his name wrong. Yaha, Yaha, or something like that. He, uh, I've never heard of him. I don't know why I told you that. So, okay, we have the Yamaha. So, the Yamaha DX7, for those of you who don't know, was the, pretty much the first major. Yamaha took the rights to FM, or at least the theory behind it, from the man who, I believe his name is Chowning, Ch uh, something else. I always think of Clam Chowder when I see his name. So that's what I was thinking of. But he basically discovered phase modulation, later became frequency modulation, and wrote a paper about it. Tried selling it to American manufacturers. They were like, no way, Jose. So they went to Yamaha. Yamaha produced the DX7. It became huge and was the biggest, one of the biggest synthesizers ever to be sold as it was cheap. It was one of the first digital synthesizers. I'm not sure if it was the first, but I'm sure there was something before it. But uh, Yamaha DX7, and they had their presets are like famous like the sounds of the dx7 are big and so you can actually import the system x files which are the files the presets were on on that machine into citrus and use those presets so they're pretty much legendary presets like everyone knows i guarantee you you've probably heard some of the piano sounds and other various sounds off of that synthesizer so that's pretty nifty. Now, what else is in here? Because this is the reason I'm covering this as I am right now. Well, we could copy a, a preset and we can go to another Citrus so we could paste the same preset. That's kind of cool. Now, if we come over here to an oscillator, you see our copy oscillator settings and then we'll be able to paste them later. We can reset the waveform. I mean, if, if you wanted to do it that way, you could always just right click and hit like sign or something and it would, it would do it for you. You'd be like, oh, I didn't want that. Boom. So there's a faster way to do that. Randomize waveform settings, so it'll go boom, like randomize. This is this could be a bad idea, but you could generally maybe filter some stuff out, move some things, move some things back, and come up with something that's pretty cool. And you can see it even it even adds some stuff down there for you. Randomize waveform settings. So something that is really cool, pretty cool, because this one you'd probably have to tinker with and take out the extreme settings that are messing with your stuff. And that's something else that you've hopefully by the end of this series you've seen that when you randomize something, you can say, oh, I know that all that crazy noise is coming from this setting and you can move it and you can now use your randomization options effectively. You'd be like, oh man, they moved the noise knob and or they moved this they moved this and that and added some stuff in here. That's where all my noise is coming from. I could take this away and see what randomly came out and sort of get something useful from it. So that's something that's available to you. Now, something that is interesting is we have operator one and we can go over to operator five and make something, right? We could make it a something like that. What the heck? And then we can click on, so we have operator two, three, and four, which are all different things right now, but we can click on morph oscillator one to five. And if you do that, it'll morph or what it thinks is the steps between one to five and put all these in between steps. I'm not sure how you would get to, I guess if you did automated the volume on each of them dynamically, the output volume or something, you could, you could uh, get a smooth transition type thing, but I'm not sure how you would morph between them other than that. They need a, what they need is they need a, a knob that allows you to, to morph between the operator volumes as a crossover set. That would be so cool. 
but uh, they don't have that. But they have this option. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, I must have a knob that will let me do this. And it doesn't. They just set up your oscillators. So that might be a creative process you might go through. You might come up with some sort of beginning point and end point. Simple oscillators would probably come out a lot more stable on the in-between sections because I've noticed they tend to add a lot of high-frequency stuff, like just a ton of it. And so it doesn't always sound the greatest. But again, these are in patterns, so it'll sound much better than us just randomly going in there and putting stuff down. Now you have effect presets. I didn't tell you this until now, but you can go into presets and you can add in different presets. So you have this distribution. It's the same thing on Harmer. So it just changes the distribution on the how it distributes the voices, how it distributes the voices. Go check out the Harmer tutorial on Unison if you want to know more about these because they go into it more in depth there. We have chorus and reverb presets. So that's pretty cool. And look at that, Cathedral. This is the exact same thing I was in the Harmless when I took out Harmless to show you. Now we have arpeggiator options. We have this invert. What does that do? Well, if we made an arpeggiator as we did earlier, and we had a certain notes going in order, like first note, second note, third note, da 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 da. We can hit invert, and it will then take all those and reverse them. So it'll instead of it being the next note, it'll be the previous note. Instead of it being the same note, it'll be some other note. It'll it'll invert them all. Now portamento, things get a little crazy on this one. So first up, we have variable time. Now what this does is depending on what note you hit. Um, maybe I should just demonstrate it. However, this one could get dicey. I don't know. So we turn portamento on. And another neat trick, if we go to pitch, we could turn our envelope on. And we could go to open state file. And then they have a portamento basic file. We could open that. And so here it is, portamento basic. And we have it working, right? So pretty simple setup once you know what buttons you're touching. We have variable time first. That's, I believe, active by default. And what it does is, depending on the notes, how far away they are, that'll determine whether or not it slides and how much it slides. But if we play two notes, not as much slide. So that's a that's an intuitive setting, okay? That's one that you would expect to just be there. Um, Portamento, however, track origin. Uh, if this one, as you see, we can have them both active at the same time. This one will, let's say we've got a cutoff on our note when we let go, there will be a, a, and so our filter was on. Our filter will still be on and will open up again. So it'll carry over uh, envelope settings with it, which is really, really useful. Uh, I've never really used it, but <laughs> it's a useful thing. At least it sounds useful. We have no limits. So the portamento has, there's no octave limit. If we put, so what does this mean? So if I hit a really low note and a really high note, it'll slide the same. It doesn't care that the distance is huge. If it's three octaves or four octaves. But if we put octave wrap on, so if I hit like a note like a C, and then I hit a C two octaves up, it will instead wrap. So let's say I hit a, a C down here, and then I hit an E two octaves up. It will slide, you heard it, it slides from the C right below that E. It doesn't slide from the low, low C. It skips an octave, so it's always going to be within the octave. So if we hit two notes that are the same note, so we have a C, I'll hit an E two octaves up. I believe that is three octaves. And it will interpolate between that. So it's kind of an interesting deal. It will skip the C and will go to a note in the relative octave. So the skip is a, the portamento is a lot shorter. Now, if we come down here, we can set it to instead be a limit so that it only does it within four, three, or two, or one semitone. So one note, two note, three note, or four notes away in semitones. So not just the white keys, for those of you who don't know how to read music for some reason yet. There are, we're talking about white keys and black keys, so four of those. Or three of those, or two of those, or one of those. So you have some pretty extensive portamento options after, I mean, like, yeah, this is, like, ridiculous, but, I mean, I guess it's more powerful in that regard. I've never come in here and really fine-tuned it, but if I wanted a really solid lead voice, this would maybe be some interesting options to mess with. Velocity, you can link velocity to volume. Now you have attack, release, and length time. Uh, this would be interesting for, like, an ARP or something, but I believe you have to have your, your global... I believe it is only relative to your operator one's pitch envelope. So if we link velocity to attack time. Uh, 
Um, okay. I've never really used this option, so. I know it links up to something, and I could go look in the manual and figure it out, but I don't think it's, like, that creatively that super freaking important. But it will link it to some envelope somewhere. There must maybe I have to turn global on or something. I don't see why that would make a difference, but stranger things have happened, you know? Let's try this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but I know you can link it up to be sensitive to volume, attack, length, and release time. So those are all things. Maybe it's relative to your MIDI controller. I just don't know. And then you have different size options. That's that. That is Citrus from the ground up. I may do a basic sound design video right after this where I just make a couple patches, but I'm probably going to do a sound design with Citrus to really give some depth. So now you know what all the controls do, you know where everything is, you know how it works, and you there's literally not a button in here I don't think that I've covered unless I said something like, it probably doesn't really matter. Uh, if you could figure it out if you really wanted to, it's probably just a simple look up in the manual. But you understand, a huge deal of synthesis. You have additive, FM, if you've watched the FM series, RM, and subtractive synthesis all at your fingertips, all within the same plugin. Then you could send things out, as we saw earlier, you could affect them separately. You could just, it's nuts. You can literally create most sounds. Like you it's just, the world is open to you. So start experimenting. Drop your cool patches down below. If you make cool presets, let me know. Um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to make some cool stuff here in the future. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and share this series with someone that you think would enjoy it. Maybe someone who just got Citrus or uh, FL Studios and is looking for a good series to get started on. Subscribe. And have a blessed day.